Today is the 25th of December 2019. Welcome to Walking the Way. My name is Ray. I want to say thank you to everyone for listening in as we continue to read scripture together, as we continue to pray together, as we continue to have that regular rhythm of worship together. It's Christmas Day. I pray that you have a wonderful, peaceful day as we celebrate and remember the birth of the King Jesus. But I also recognize and pray that if you find Christmas difficult, that you would have some peace and some joy as well. If you are joining us for the first time, let me explain that each episode follows a really simple pattern of a mixture of prayer, scripture and music. So having explained how it all works, let's start today's leg of walking the way with our opening prayer. Let's pray, shall we? It seemed that the darkness had lasted so long, and now in the silence of the night, I feel with a deep joy the breaking light of your presence. Welcome, Lord. Welcome to this earth and into our lives in this new way. I've longed for you to come into my life, and to be here with me in this life, and you are. And I feel a hint of the pure happiness and peace that awaits us in your glory. My heart bursts with joy, and my feet dance with abandon. You've come, Lord Jesus. Thank you. We're going to have our first piece of music, just to give us some time to center our thoughts on God, and then we're going to get into our Bible readings for today. And in today's Bible readings, we continue with the book of Job and John's Revelation. Let's ask God to speak to us this morning through the scriptures. Father, prepare our hearts as we read scripture today. Today we celebrate your true revelation, the way, the truth, and the life. And so we ask, Lord, as we read scriptures, that you show us the way, the truth, and the life. We ask this in him who is for us our truth. Amen. Our Bible readings this week are taken from the contemporary English version and begin with Job 26. Then Job said, You have really been helpful to someone weak and weary. You have given great advice and wonderful wisdom to someone truly in need. 
How could anyone possibly speak with such understanding? Remember the terrible trembling of those in the world of the dead below the mighty ocean. Nothing in that land of death and destruction is hidden from God, who hung the northern sky and suspended the earth on empty space. God stores water in clouds, but they don't burst, and he wraps them around the face of the moon. On the surface of the ocean, God has drawn a boundary line between light and darkness, and columns supporting the day tremble at his command. By his power and wisdom, God conquered the force of the mighty ocean. The heavens became bright when he breathed, and the escaping sea monster died at the hands of God. These things are merely a whisper of God's power at work. How little would we understand if this whisper ever turned into thunder? Job said, I am desperate because God all-powerful refuses to do what is right. As surely as God lives, and while he gives me breath, I will tell only the truth. Until the day I die, I will refuse to do wrong by saying you are right, because each day my conscience agrees that I am innocent. I pray that my enemies will suffer no less than the wicked. Such people are hopeless, and God all-powerful will cut them down, without listening when they beg for mercy. And that is what God should do, because they don't like Him or even pray. Now I will explain in detail what God all-powerful does. All of you have seen these things for yourselves, so you have no excuse. Here is how God all-powerful treats those who are wicked and brutal. They may have many children, but most of them will go hungry or suffer a violent death. Others will die of disease, and their widows won't be able to weep. The wicked may collect riches and clothes in abundance as easily as clay, but God's people will wear clothes taken from them and divide up their riches. No homes built by the wicked will outlast a cocoon or a shack. Those sinners may go to bed rich, but they will wake up poor. Terror will strike at night like a flood or a storm. Then a scorching wind will sweep them away without showing mercy as they try to escape. At last the wind will celebrate because they are gone. Gold and silver are mined, then purified. The same is done with iron and copper. Miners carry lanterns deep into the darkness to search for these materials. They dig tunnels in distant, unknown places where they dangle by ropes. Far beneath the grain fields fire are built to break loose those rocks that have jewels or gold. Miners go to places unseen by the eyes of hawks. They walk on soil unknown to the proudest lions. With their own hands they remove sharp rocks and uproot mountains. They dig through the rocks in search of jewels and precious metals. They also uncover the source of rivers and discover secret places. But where is wisdom found? No human knows the way nor can it be discovered in the deepest sea. It is worth much more than silver or pure gold or precious stones. Nothing is its equal, not gold or costly glass. Wisdom is worth much more than coral, jasper or rubies. All the topaz of Ethiopia and the finest gold cannot compare with it. Where then is wisdom? It is hidden from human eyes and even from birds. Death and destruction have merely heard rumors about where it is found. God is the only one who knows the way to wisdom, because he sees everything beneath the heavens. When God divided out the wind and the water, and when he decided the path of rain and lightning, he also determined the truth and defined wisdom. God told us, Wisdom means that you respect me, the Lord, and turn from sin. Job said, I long for the past when God took care of me, and the light from his lamp showed me the way through the dark. I was in the prime of life. God was all-powerful. He was my closest friend. And all of my children were nearby. My herds gave enough milk to bathe my feet, and from my olive harvests flowed rivers of oil. When I sat down at the meeting of the city council, the young leader stepped aside, while the older one stood and remained silent. Everyone was pleased with what I said and did. The poor people or orphans cried for help. I came to their rescue. And I was highly praised for my generosity to widows and others in poverty. Kindness and justice were my coat and hat. 
I was good to the blind and to the lame. I was a father to the needy, and I defended them in court, even if they were strangers. When criminals attacked, I broke their teeth and set their victims free. I felt certain that I would live a long and happy life, then die in my own bed. In those days, I was strong like a tree with deep roots and plenty of water, or like an archer's new bow. Everyone listened in silence to my welcome advice, and when I finished speaking, nothing needed to be said. My words were eagerly accepted like showers of spring, and the smile on my face renewed everyone's hopes. My advice was followed as though I were a king leading my troops, or someone comforting those in sorrow. Young people now insult me, although their fathers would have been a disgrace to my sheepdogs. And those who insult me are helpless themselves. They must claw the desert sand in the dark for something to satisfy their hunger. They gather tasteless shrubs for food and firewood, and they are run out of towns as though they were thieves. Their only homes are ditches or holes between rocks, where they bray like donkeys gathering round the shrubs, and like senseless donkeys they are chased away. Those worthless nobodies made up jokes and songs to disgrace me. They are hateful and keep their distance even while spitting in my direction. God has destroyed me, and so they don't care what they do. Their attacks never stop, though I am defenseless and my feet are trapped. Without any help, they prevent my escape, destroying me completely and leaving me crushed. Terror has me surrounded. My reputation and my riches have vanished like a cloud. I am sick at heart. Pain has taken its toll. Night chews on my bones, causing endless torment, and God has shrunken my skin, choking me to death. I have been thrown in the dirt, and now am dirt myself. I beg God for help, but there is no answer. And when I stand up, he simply stares. God has turned brutal, stirring up a windstorm to toss me about. Soon he'll send me home to the world of the dead, where we all must go. No one refuses help to others when disaster strikes. I mourn for the poor and those who suffered, and when I beg for relief and light, all I receive are disaster and darkness. My stomach is tied in knots. Pain is my daily companion. Suffering has scorched my sin, and in the city council I stand and cry out, making mournful sounds like jackals and owls. My skin is so parched it peels right off, and my bones are burning. My only songs are sorrow and sadness. Revelation 17 One of the seven angels who had emptied the bowls came over and said to me, Come on, I will show you how God will punish that shameless prostitute who sits on many oceans. Every king on earth has slept with her, and her shameless ways are like wine that has made everyone on earth drunk. With the help of the Spirit, the angel took me into the desert where I saw a woman sitting on a red beast. The beast was covered with names that were an insult to God, and it had seven heads and ten horns. The woman was dressed in purple and scarlet robes, and she wore jewellery made of gold, precious stones and pearls. In her hand she held a gold cup filled with the filthy and nasty things she had done. On her forehead a mysterious name was written. I am the great city of Babylon, the mother of every immoral and filthy thing on earth. I could tell that the woman was drunk on the blood of God's people who had given their lives for Jesus. This surprising sight amazed me, and the angel said, Why are you so amazed? I will explain the mystery about this woman and about the beast she is sitting on, with its seven heads and ten horns. The beast you saw is one that used to be and no longer is. It will come back from the deep pit, but only to be destroyed. Everyone on earth whose names were not written in the book of life before the time of creation will be amazed. They will see this beast that used to be and no longer is, but will be once more. Anyone with wisdom can figure this out. The seven heads that the woman is sitting on stand for seven hills. These heads are also seven kings. Five of the kings are dead. One is ruling now, and the other one has not yet come but when he does, he will rule for only a little while. 
you also saw a beast that used to be and no longer is. That beast is one of the seven kings who will return as the eighth king, but only to be destroyed. The ten horns that you saw are ten more kings, who have not yet come into power, and they will rule with the beast for only a short time. They all think alike, and will give their power and authority to the beast. These kings will go to war against the lamb, but they will defeat them, because he is lord over all lords and king over all kings. His followers are chosen and special and faithful. The oceans that you saw the prostitutes sitting on are crowds of people from all races and languages. The ten horns and the beast will start hating the shameless woman. They will strip off her clothes and leave her naked. Then they will eat her flesh and throw the rest of her body into a fire. God is the one who made these kings all think alike and decide to give their power to the beast. And they will do this until what God has said comes true. The woman you saw is the great city that rules over all kings on earth. I saw another angel come from heaven. This one had great power and the earth was bright because of his glory. The angel shouted, Fallen! Powerful Babylon has fallen and is now the home of demons. It is the den of every filthy spirit and of all unclean birds and every dirty and hated animal. Babylon's evil and immoral wine has made all the nations drunk. Every king on earth has slept with her, and every merchant on earth is rich because of her evil desires. Then I heard another voice from heaven shout, My people, you must escape from Babylon. Do not take part in her sins and share her punishment. Her sins are piled as high as heaven. God has remembered the evil she has done. Treat her as she has treated others. Make her pay double for what she has done. Make her drink twice as much of what she has mixed for others. That woman honored herself with a life of luxury. Reward her now with suffering and pain. Deep in her heart, Babylon said, I am the queen. Never will I be a widow or know what it means to be sad. And so in a single day she will suffer the pain of sorrow, hunger and death. Fire will destroy her dead body because her judge is the powerful Lord God. Every king on earth who slept with her and shared in her luxury will mourn. They will weep when they see the smoke from that fire. Her sufferings will frighten them and they will stand at a distance and say, Pity that great and powerful city. Pity Babylon. In a single hour her judgment has come. Every merchant on earth will mourn because there is no one to buy their goods. There won't be anyone to buy their gold, silver, jewels, pearls, fine linen, purple cloth, silk, scarlet cloth, sweet-smelling wood, fancy carvings of ivory and wood, as well as things made of bronze, iron or marble. No one will buy their cinnamon, spices, incense, myrrh, frankincense, wine, olive oil, fine flour, wheat, cattle, sheep, horses, chariots, slaves and other human beings. Babylon, the things your heart desired have all escaped from you. Every luxury and all your glory will be lost forever. You will never get them back. The merchants had become rich because of her, but when they saw her sufferings they were terrified. They stood at a distance crying and mourning. Then they shouted, Pity the great city of Babylon! She is dressed in fine linen and wore scarlet and purple cloth. She had jewellery made of gold and precious stones and pearls. Yet in a single hour her riches disappeared. Every ship captain and passenger and sailor stood at a distance, together with everyone who does business by travelling on the sea. When they saw the smoke from her fire, they shouted, This was the greatest city ever. Then they cried loudly, and in their sorrow they threw dust on their heads as they said, Pity the great city of Babylon. Anyone who sailed the seas became rich from her treasures. But in a single hour the city was destroyed. The heavens should be happy with God's people and apostles and prophets. God has punished her for them. A powerful angel then picked up a huge stone and threw it into the sea. The angel said, This is how the great city of Babylon will be thrown down never to rise again. The music of harps and singers and of flutes and trumpets will no longer be heard. 
No workers will ever set up shop in that city, and the sound of grinding grain will be silenced forever. Lamps will no longer shine anywhere in Babylon, and couples will never again say wedding vows there. Her merchants ruled the earth, and by her witchcraft she fooled all nations. On the streets of Babylon is found the blood of God's people, and of his prophets, and everyone else. Psalm 141 A Psalm by David A Prayer for the Lord's Protection I pray to you, Lord. Please listen when I pray, and hurry to help me. Think of my prayer as sweet-smelling incense, and think of my lifted hands as an evening sacrifice. Help me to guard my words whenever I say something. Don't let me want to do evil or waste my time doing wrong with wicked people. Don't let me even taste the good things they offer. Let your faithful people correct and punish me. My prayer condemns the deeds of those who do wrong, so don't let me be friends with any of them. Everyone will admit that I am right when their rulers are thrown down a rocky cliff and their bones lie scattered in broken bones on top of a grave. You are my Lord and God, and I look to you for safety. Don't let me be harmed. Protect me from the traps of those violent people, and make them fall into their own traps, while you help me escape. We're going to have our second piece of music, just to give us some time to think about the bits of scripture that have caught our attention, and after music we'll say our prayers for the day.
Before we pray, just a reminder that if you would like us to pray with you, then drop us a line through Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, or email, the usual channels. There are links in the show notes. If you click the links, they'll take you to wherever you need to go. Send us a message. We'd love to pray with you. But let's pray, shall we? God of grace and providence, we stand amazed at the miracle of the Incarnation. Make us ready to receive your great gift in Jesus Christ once again as we celebrate Christmas this year. By your Holy Spirit, enable us to understand the true meaning of Christmas. On this day especially, we invite you to be present with us as we open gifts, as we visit friends and family, and as we contemplate what Christmas means for us. And be the joy and peace in the lives of people around the world especially those who must be apart from loved ones, those who have no meal to share or no guest to host. On this day, Lord, be with us in a special way through Jesus, your gift to us. Amen. We say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us and remain with us, now and forevermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.